This is Disney Entertainment News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside, and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories for Tuesday, January 10th, 2023. After becoming the fastest movie to reach $1 billion at the box office in 2022, Avatar The Way of Water has now surpassed Jurassic World as the seventh highest grossing film of all time, according to Variety. After four weeks since its release, the Avatar sequel has generated $517 million in North America and $1.19 billion internationally. Now it has generated $1.7 billion globally. The film has overtaken Jurassic World at $1.6 billion as the seventh highest grossing movie of all time. Avatar The Way of Water has a chance to surpass $2 billion in sales, something that hasn't been done by any film since the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, there are currently only five films in history that have surpassed $2 billion. Avatar, the original, at $2.9 billion. Avengers Endgame at $2.79 billion. Titanic at $2.2 billion. Star Wars The Force Awakens at $2 billion. And Avengers Infinity War at $2 billion. If Avatar The Way of Water were to break the $2 billion threshold, James Cameron would have been the director of half the films to ever do it. You can check out several clips from Avatar The Way of Water released at D23 for a quick look at what can be expected from the second Avatar film. As previously announced, Sigourney Weaver makes her return, but this time as a teenager, Kiri, her original character, Dr. Grace Augustine, died in Avatar. Avatar 3 was filmed at the same time as Avatar The Way of Water. While speaking to French outlet 20 Minutes, Avatar director James Cameron revealed some new tidbits about the next installment in the blockbuster movie franchise, which will feature a new type of Navi who focus on fire. Cameron told 20 Minutes the third film will, quote, explore different cultures from those I have already shown. The fire will be represented by the Ash people. I want to show the Navi from another angle because so far I have only shown their good sides. In the early films, there are very negative human examples and very positive Navi examples, the director continued. In Avatar 3, we will explore the opposite. We will also explore new worlds while continuing the story of the main characters. I can say that the last part will be the best. The others were an introduction, a way to set the table before serving the meal. The first two Avatar films focused on the conflict between humans and Navi on Pandora. It seems the third will see Navi versus Navi for the first time. So far, the tribes introduced, the forest dwelling and the water dwelling, are largely peaceful and only attack when provoked by humans, so showing a more hostile tribe in the third film will be an interesting turn of events. Avatar 3 still does not have an official title, but it was filmed simultaneously with Avatar The Way of Water. Production is already wrapped and it's set for release on December 20th, 2024. Post-production is currently underway. Cameron has stated previously that the future of Avatar 4 and Avatar 5 will be dependent on how the second film performed at the box office. Now it seems all but assured we will get those two films in 2026 and 2028. This week, Disney unveiled the new Marvel Studios Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania poster ahead of the upcoming trailer. A new extended trailer from Marvel Studios Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania debuted during the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. According to Digital Spy, Ant-Man and the Wasp will come in at close to two hours and five minutes. For comparison, 2015's Ant-Man lasted 117 minutes, while the second outing released in 2018 was 118 minutes long. The third film's plot states that Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, along with Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, explore the quantum realm where they interact with strange creatures and embark on an adventure that goes beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. In addition to Rudd, the film also sees the return of Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne, or the Wasp, Michael Douglas as Dr. Hank Pym, Corey Stroll as Darren Cross, Yellow Jacket, that's a rumor, and Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp. When the film opens next month, the film will introduce the world to Jonathan Major's new supervillain, Kang the Conqueror, who is set to dominate the MCU for the next three years, reports Collider. The third film, which features the return of Paul Rudd as Scott Lang, will debut on February 17th in movie theaters nationwide. Disney has announced that Black Panther Wakanda Forever will be released for Disney Plus subscribers very soon. You can catch the Black Panther sequel feature, the highest grossing November release on record, in movie theaters now or from the comfort of your own home beginning on February 1st. 
You can also check out the review of the sequel film on our website. The record-breaking opening took in $181 million domestically, making Black Panther Wakanda Forever the biggest November opening of all time and the second biggest launch of 2022 behind Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. In total, the film has brought in more than $800 million at the worldwide box office before its arrival on Disney Plus was announced this week. Will you watch or re-watch Black Panther Wakanda Forever when it hits Disney Plus? Let us know in the comments. Marvel and Disney announced that a new documentary about Stan Lee will debut on Disney Plus in 2023. Stan Lee passed away in 2018. December 28, 2022 was to be his 100th birthday. Lee is known for creating and co-writing several Marvel characters, including Spider-Man, the original Avengers, and the X-Men. He worked closely with Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. Lee mostly retired from Marvel in the 1990s, but was still salaried as a chairman emeritus. He appeared in nearly every Marvel film, whether part of the MCU or not, released through 2019, with posthumous appearances in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Captain Marvel, and Avengers Endgame. The announcement video for the Stan Lee documentary features clips from his cameos in various Marvel films. You can watch it right now on our website. In honor of Stan Lee's 100th birthday, the official Stan Lee Twitter account also shared a video of fan messages left for the legend at LA Comic Con. The 2020 documentary with great power, the Stan Lee story, also explored Lee's life and career. With the massive success of The Mandalorian since 2019's debut on Disney+, Plus, that series has inspired one spinoff already, but it seems that the dream team of Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are not resting on their laurels with a new Mandalorian spinoff series reportedly in development. According to The Direct, the new series is being developed under the codename Ghost Track 17. Nothing is known about the story or a release timeline, but it's believed to be under development by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, the same team behind the original The Mandalorian series. This would be the second spinoff series of The Mandalorian, after the Book of Boba Fett released last year, connecting the series in multiple episodes. It's believed upcoming series like Ahsoka and Star Wars Skeleton Crew will also connect back to The Mandalorian in one way or another. Both of these series will premiere sometime this year on Disney+. Plus. Ahsoka follows the former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano of Star Wars The Clone Wars fame as she investigates an emerging threat to a vulnerable galaxy. The latter, meanwhile, is set in the New Republic era. It's directed by John Watts and is said to be an ambient-like coming-of-age adventure about kids, but not just for kids. Little other details are known as the project is still in early development, but if rumors are true, we will see yet another series tie-in to the adventures of the mysterious Wanderer and his adorable green companion. The now iconic and universally praised original series follows a mysterious bounty hunter traveling the outskirts of the galaxy to complete jobs. Along the way, he finds himself charged with delivering a small creature of the same species as Yoda called the Child and brings him along as a companion through his adventures. Season 3 of the Mandalorian series is set to debut on March 1st. Well, according to CNBC, both the Walt Disney Company and Comcast, which owns Universal, are considered potential buyers for the World Wrestling Entertainment, or WWE. Vince McMahon, the former CEO and chairman of WWE, has returned to the board of directors in an effort to help facilitate this sale. McMahon stepped down after an investigation revealed he paid nearly $15 million to different women over the course of 16 years to keep allegations of sexual misconduct and infidelity silent. But returning to the board will, quote, give potential buyers confidence he's supportive of the details of any transaction, according to the CNBC article. Quote, my return will allow WWE, as well as any transaction counterparties, to engage in these processes knowing they will have the support of the controlling shareholder, McMahon said in a statement Thursday. According to CNBC, there are three categories of potential buyers of WWE, which has a market cap of more than $6 billion, legacy media company streamers, and entertainment holding companies. The list of potential buyers includes Netflix, Fox, who has sold many of its entertainment assets to Disney in 2019, Warner Brothers, and Amazon. The list also includes Comcast, which owns Universal, and Disney. Comcast as a potential buyer makes a lot of sense because WWE already has an exclusive streaming deal with Comcast streaming service, Peacock, 
and a cable TV deal with NBC Universal's USA Network. CNBC suggests that Disney CEO Bob Iger may be looking to make a splashy acquisition as he retakes the reins at Disney. WWE makes sense for Disney by bolstering their ambitions when it comes to acquiring streaming content. Comcast drove the price up on the Disney Fox merger in 2019, and the sale could end up being another rivalry between Disney and Comcast. Do you think WWE would be a worthwhile acquisition for Disney or for Comcast? Let us know in the comments below. The absolute latest in Disney entertainment news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms. If you're enjoying this show, and we hope you are, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDWNT TV on YouTube for more great content, and click that bell for notifications. Also hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. And of course, if you enjoy Disney movies and TV shows, don't forget to join us for our weekly review show, Deep in the Plus. We do that show live every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and you can find previous episodes available on demand right here on WDWNT TV. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news and entertainment, this is Rob Whiteside saying don't have a good day, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.